This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. Welcome along. This session is all about the solutions to exercise 8, which was on using for and while loops. So question 1 part A was to write a for loop that multiplies all even numbers from 2 to 10. And what I've done for these first couple of questions is just set up a script that we're going to have all the solutions in. And you can see I've just put some comments at the top of the script and the typical clear all and CLC commands. So question one, we'll define our for loop. And now we're going to define a loop counter variable called x1. And that's going to start at two go in steps of 2 to 10. So that's going to contain all our even numbers between 2 and 10. Then within the body of the loop, we'll go and calculate the multiplication. So we'll call this result 1a. And that will be result 1a, which is the value on the previous iteration times our loop counter variable x1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the semicolon off the end of the line just now so you can see the result printing on every iteration of the loop. So the other thing we have to do is we have to define result 1a before we use it in the loop for the first time. So above the loop we define it to equal 1. And now we're ready to run our script. And if we have a look down in the command window, you can see on the first iteration, result 1a was 2, then 8, then 48, then 384, and finally 3840. And you can perform those calculations manually in the command window to check that those results are correct. So question 1 part b was to do the same thing but using a while loop. So we'll go back into our script and we'll just put the semicolon on the end of that line so that it doesn't print now. And we'll also just display the final result from question 1a. So 1b is to do the same thing using a while loop. We'll define our while loop. And the condition to run our while loop is that while our loop counter variable is less than or equal to 10, compute the multiplication. So we'll call this result 1b, and it's just the same as before, result 1b times our loop counter variable x2. Now, when we've performed that calculation, we need to increment x2 before the next iteration of the loop. And because we're looking at even numbers, we increment x2 by adding 2 to it. And ending our loop, and displaying the final result. And once again, we need to define both the result 1b before we use it in the loop, which will be set equal to 1. And we also need to define our loop counter variable before we use it. And that's going to start at 2. So let's run our script again. And now you can see we get the same answer from both 1a and 1b. So part 2a was to use a for loop that assigns the values 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 to a vector. So we'll define our for loop. And we'll define our loop counter variable m to range from 1 to 5. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to use m to put our values into a vector. So m is going to be the index to our vector. And our vector is going to be called result 2a. We'll index it with m. And we'll define x3 to be the values that we want to put into that vector. We need to increment x3 by 10 on every iteration of the loop.
and we need to define x3 before we first use it. And we want it to start at 10 because 10 is the first value that's going to be in our vector. So we'll just run that again. And you can see now we're getting the values that we want in the vector. So 2b was to do the same thing as 2a, but using a while loop. So our while condition is going to be while our loop counter variable is less than 50, which is the last value in our vector, compute the result, which we will also index using our variable m. And we need to increment x4 by 10 on every iteration of the loop. And when we're using the while loop, we also need to increment our indexing variable m by 1. So on each iteration of the loop, we put our new value into the next element of the vector. And we need to define x4, which is going to start from 10. And our indexing variable will start from 1. So let's just run that. And that does the same thing as to part A, which is what we wanted. So question two part C, is there a simpler way to do this avoiding loops? Well, yes, in this case there is. We could simply have created this vector using a range. a number of ways of doing that. We could have just entered the values by hand because there's not very many of them. We could have used the colon vector. Or alternatively, we could have used the linspace function. And if you run that, you'll see that they all produce the same result. So question three, we're given a vector and in part A we're told to add up the values of all the elements in X. So we're told we need to use a for loop to do that. And we'll define our loop counter variable to start at one and it's going to count through all the elements in X. And you can see that there's six elements in X. So we could simply type one to six. But what we're going to do is just use the length command to get the length of X, which will return six. But it's good practice to use this because if, for example, you change X and it becomes longer or shorter, your algorithm is still going to work. So within the for loop, we want to add up the elements and we're going to assign them to a vector and we're going to assign them to a variable called my sum and my sum is going to be the value on the previous iteration plus the new value which is x of n and we'll end that now before we go into that loop we need to just define my sum and set it to zero initially and we'll just put a little comment to say that this is a summation. And you're told that you can use the built-in functions sum and come sum to check your answer for this question. So we'll just use the display command to display our calculated sum and display the sum using the built-in sum function. And we'll just run this script now and check that we get the correct result. And you can see that our summation using the for loop and the MATLAB summation using the built-in function sum both produce the same answer. So we're going to do the same thing for part B, but this is going to be a cumulative sum. And again, we're told to use a for loop, but you can see with a cumulative sum, that instead of the answer being a single scalar value, it's actually a vector of values. 
and you can see the result we're expecting is 1, 9, 12, 21, 21, 22. Our loop counter is going to start at 1 and go to length of x. And our cumulative sum variable, because it's a vector, I'm going to index it using our counter n. And it's going to be the sum of the previous values plus the new value. Now, you'll notice the problem that we're going to have here is, if we try to run this as is, on the first iteration of the loop, our first value of our cumulative sum is going to try and access the zero element in cumulative sum. And the zero element doesn't exist. So for our cumulative sum vector, for the first value, we'll make that equal to the first value of x. And we'll start our sum from the second value in x. And as before, we're just going to copy and paste the display commands and compare our cumulative sum with MATLAB's built-in cumulative sum, which you can find with the cumsum function. So we'll run our script. And you can see we've got an error on line 27. And our problem is that we simply misspelled our variable. So we just need to go back and change that and rerun our script. And now you can see that both our cumulative sum function and the built-in one produce the same answer. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.